What's up guys, this is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Now as a dive instructor in 2018, we are troubled sometimes with, do we teach tables, do we teach computers, do we teach both? And because of technology today, a lot of training agencies have kind of swayed away from the tables at the basic open water level. Now there are parts that a student does need to understand about the tables, but in general, the dive computers is the way most agencies and most instructors have kind of went to teaching. Now me personally, I'm kind of that old school dive I started diving in the late 80s and so the dive tables are kind of ingrained into me and so I still teach my students dive tables. Now I do stress the importance of having a dive computer and understanding how they work but it's always good to have the tables as a fallback. Now one of the difficulties is of course teaching children dive tables. Now in general dive tables are not hard to understand but having the time and the patience to work with children to where they can understand exactly what the tables represent and how to read them sometimes can be difficult well i've got a student now currently she's 10 years old and she is doing absolutely phenomenal through class this is one of the smartest children i've ever met Recently, I was teaching her the dive tables. I want to show you just how well she picked it up. We was teaching her the basic tables, how to do consecutive dives, and we even taught her minimum surface intervals. And I want to show you just how quickly she picked this up. After about a five minute session with her, she was able to plan multiple dives back to back. And we spent about another five minutes going over a minimum surface interval. And she was able to get up in front of the class and do her minimum surface interval for pre-planned -pre dives with ease. So take a quick look and then I'll give you some final thoughts. How deep would you like to get? Um, a hundred and thirty? Okay, so you want to max out limits. So right one thirty right there. And tell me how long we can stay at 130 feet. Five minutes. Five minutes. You want to stay five or you want to be conservative and stay a little less? Five. Say five minutes. You get in the book. Everything you paid for, right? Very good. Okay, so after a five minute bottom time at 130 feet, what's my pressure group? See? See? All right, so write it up here. Very good. Now, how long would you like to stay out of the water before we make another dive? About one hour. One hour. So write one hour up here. And tell me, after an hour, what would be my new pressure group? Wait, so this. Uh, C. C again? Okay, so we're still a C diver. Very good. Now, for this next dive, remember, we always do our deepest dives first, so this one needs to be a little shallower. So how, how deep would you like to go on this one? 100. 100 feet? There it is. Okay, you're at 100. <laughs> Very good. So now that we're on our second dive and we have nitrogen, we've well got to go to table three again. Very good. Okay. So we're going to a depth of 100 feet. We're a sea diver. 10 and 10. 10 and 10. So the top number is the, 10. the residual, right? 10. And the, there you go. So that give you a, a total of 20 minutes, even though your actual time is only 10. But you got now you got a depth, a time. What, what do we get up here? Now the pressure group, right? Yeah, yeah. And which table do we use to do that? Table one. Table one, very good. Okay. So we find your depth. Depth is uh, 100 feet. Okay. And your time. Okay. What's your new? Yep. Yeah. And what's your new pressure group? Very good. You rocked that out of the world. Pretty cool, right? Dive tables are not complicated. We follow the arrows and we can never get lost, right? We always do what dive first? The deepest. The deepest dive first. Okay. And at the end of every dive on our way up, what do we stop and do around the 15 foot mark? Do you remember our profile? What do we do? Three minutes. Three minutes at 15 feet, and that's called a what? Safety stop. Safety stop. High five. That's awesome. Good job. So now what we want to do is we want to look at a dive computer and how it basically does the same thing. Now the only difference between a dive computer 
in dive tables is the dive computer won't give us these letters. All right? Now remember, the letters themselves are just a representation, it's a variable for these numbers. It's just an easier way to remember A, B, C, D, E, F, G versus how many minutes, right? So what we want to look at how a dive computer works is basically on this one, I'm going to go over to where it says plan. Okay, here's plan. I'm going to hold it down, and then I want to pick a depth. How deep would you like to go? 35. You go to 35 feet? Well, the, the smallest increment on this computer is 40 feet, so that would be what we'd round up to, correct? So we'd round up, look how long it says I can stay. Just like the table says, right? Let's pick another depth. How deep would you like to go? A little bit deeper? 46. 46. So 46 I'd have to round up to? Look how, look how long it tells me I can stay. 67. 67 minutes. Let's do another one. How deep would you like to go? 52. 52 feet. So obviously I'm going to have to go up to the next number, round up. So there's for 52 would be 60. Look how long I can stay. 48 minutes. So do you see how the computers essentially do the same thing that the table does? Yes. It's just not giving me this letter. Yes. Okay. Now. After you've made a dive, your computer will actually go into what's called a surface interval mode. Basically, it becomes table two. And when it's in that mode, and you're back here on the plan screen, as you're picking a depth to go to, it's going to take into consideration your residual nitrogen that it took on. Okay? And so those numbers will change just like we did these numbers. Remember how these numbers changed? And we said, well, wait a minute, I could stay longer in that, but since I had residual, I had to cut that number down. Your dive computer does the exact same thing. Okay. okay. So they work hand in hand. Now, is either one more important than the other since they do the same thing? No, they're not really more important. What I will say, though, is dive computers are a little bit more conservative, and we can kind of see that here. If we go to plan again, and we pick a number, we'll see just how more conservative they are. So let's say a depth of 60 feet. According to the computer, I only have 48 minutes at 60 feet. What does the table say I have at 60 feet? 50. 50. So the tables actually give me a little bit more time, right? But now the tables can't do what's called multi-level planning like a computer. So the computer, as you're swimming up to the surface, you're not going to be taking on quite as much nitrogen, right? Well, the tables can't do that, all right? They're, they're basically a square profile like we're doing here. The computer can take that into, can, you know, into consideration, and as you come up, it will actually gain more time. It will give you more time, all right? Now, some of the downsides to a computer, they're battery-driven. So if your battery dies underwater, could you take the tables with you? These little tiny tables here, could you take them with you because they're waterproof? Absolutely. So... If something happens, you could pull out of your pocket the slate and look at it and say, okay, I, I know I need to come on up. But now remember, if your computer dies, you're going to come up anyways. Right? Pretty simple to do. So do you feel confident working the tables now? Yes. Good job. High five. So what we're going to do today is two dives. Our first dive is going to be to 40 feet for 60 minutes. And then after a short boat ride, we're going to go to 30 feet for 120 minutes. And I need you to tell me what the minimum surface interval that we have to take to do it safely. Two. So 40 for 60 puts you in one. Two. Okay. Seven. All right, very good. Okay, table three. You're gonna to go to a depth of 30 feet for your next dive for 120 minutes. Now to find the time in between those two, what do we do? Go to table two. You'll find the G on the side and the E on the bottom. Right there. 16 minutes, so you're right there. 
So to make these two dives safely, you would need to stay out of the water for an hour and 16 minutes. And remember, this is called minimum surface interval. It's the minimum amount of time you have to stay out of the water to do those two dives safely. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So now not only can we plan and log dives, we can plan them in advance for when our dives have already been planned for us, which most of the time on a dive boat, the captain or the instructor is going to say, okay, these are the two dives that we're going to make today. Okay, so what your job is at that point is use the tables to verify that you can do them safely. Okay. Okay, pretty cool. So there you go, guys. As you can see, she was clearly able to read the tables, understand and comprehend exactly what the letters and numbers represented. She was able to do this time and time again. She could plan consecutive dives. Um, we even showed her the minimum surface interval, and she was able to pick that up very, very quickly. And if you're an instructor out there and you're worried about teaching tables to kids, don't be. They can pick it up. They can understand it. I promise you, if you're patient enough and you can break it down to exactly what they need to know, kids can understand it. I know in today's day and age that computers are the norm, and we do teach computers here at the shop. We show our students how to plan with computers, but we always show them how to back it up with tables, and it's something that it's only going to make them more educated. It's going to make them smarter as far as their diving career is concerned, so please don't be afraid to teach children the dive tables. Guys, if you got any questions on how to do calculations, check out some of the links down in the description below, or drop me a comment comment down below with a question on tables and I'll be happy to answer your questions the best and as quickly as I can. Guys, if you like this video, simply smash that like button for me. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.